This is the Henkel 178. It's the first aircraft to be powered by a turbojet engine and did its first flight just a few days in prior to World War II. But how was it actually built and how did it work? Let's find out. Before World War II, the piston engine was the best and most reliable engine available for an aircraft. As we've seen in the previous video, there were still some pioneers who wanted to design a completely new type of engine. In 1910, Enrico Anta from Romania invented the Motorjet, an engine that he used on his aircraft the Anta 1910 and is said to be World's first jet plane, even though both historians and aviators aren't sure if this is even true. In the 1930s, Secondo Campini, an Italian engineer, developed the Caproni N1, which was also powered by a motor jet and one of the first jet planes to fly. Engineers were looking for a method to make their planes way faster than they were at the time. So also Ernst Henkel, chef design of the Henkel Flugzeugwerke in Germany. He was the opinion that piston engine planes had already reached their maximum effectiveness. That's why he was also engaged in development of rocket engines. Additionally, manufacturers like Henkel, Jumo or Daimler-Benz were also working on their own jet engines. Henkel's first attempt to build a rocket-powered plane was the Henkel HE-176. With the HE-176, Ernst Henkel had already experience with building rocket-powered planes. And later he wanted to design his first jet-powered aircraft, the HE-178. And that's exactly what this video will be about. The 178 was a small, high-wing aircraft with elliptical wings and symmetric airfoils. In its first version, the V1, it had a wingspan of 7.2 meters, a length of 7.5 meters and weighed almost 2 tons, metric tons of course. In a level flight at a low altitude, it could reach speed of 700 kilometers an hour and climb 4 kilometers in just 6 minutes. For its time, these were absolutely great numbers, but the aircraft also had some downsides. For example, it had only a range of 200 km, which means it could stay airborne for just 20 minutes. As the plane was only built to test newly designed engines, this wasn't all too bad. Because of this plane being a flying test bed for jet engines, the engine is the most important part of the aircraft. Henkel used the AGS-3, which was designed by Hans-Joachim Papst von Ohen and his assistant Max Hahn. They designed it and built several prototypes in the 1930s, completely independent from their British efforts to build a jet engine. The first version, the HES-1, was powered by hydrogen, while the later switched to kerosene in the later versions. In the end, the engine was tested while being mounted on the belly of a Henkel HE-118. This attempt turned out great, the engine worked perfectly fine. In its final version, the engine weighed 360 kg, had a diameter of 1.2 meters and could deliver a static thrust of 5 kN. The air inlet and outlet were designed in a similar way as at the later designed F86 Sabre. So the air streamed in at the nose of the aircraft, through the whole aircraft, the engine and came out at the very back of the aircraft. On August 27, 1939, all works were completed at the aircraft and the engine. Engine and aircraft were tested extensively and it was finally time to do the very first flight. One of Germany's best test pilots, Erich Warsitz, piloted the HE-178 at its first flight. It took the aircraft 400 meters to take off, way more than expected. The aircraft was completely underpowered. As Warsitz later told, the aircraft was one of the most stable and less shaking aircraft he ever flew. That's of course because a jet engine runs a lot smoother than any piston engine. During his first flight, where the retractable landing gear didn't work, he reached speeds of 600 km an hour. Later, more test flights were done, even when World War II started just a few days after the first flight. During the war, more test flights were done, until the 178 was finally shown to the German Ministry of Defense, the Reichsluftfahrtministerium. The ILM was impressed by the jet engine. They immediately started to support development of jet engines. Due to its range of only 200 km and a flight time of just 20 minutes, the ILM was not interested in the aircraft at all. Nevertheless, Henkel did not stop doing test flights with the HE-178. They even tried out several new engines from BMW, Jumo and Daimler-Benz. Henkel built two prototypes of the 178. One with an elliptical wing, which did all the test flights, 
and one with a trapezium shaped wing which never took off. Both aircraft were stored in a hangar in Germany until they were destroyed by Allied bomb attacks. Besides the 178, Hankel developed two other jet powered aircraft, the 280 and the 162. The Hankel 280 was a twin engine fighter jet that lost competition against the Messerschmitt Amy 262, which was a lot more modern. Only one prototype was ever produced, while the 162 was rather successful. 170 aircraft were built completely out of wood and a little metal, and it was one of the last attempts of Nazi Germany to win World War II. Today, there's a full size model of the 178 hung at the airfield of Rostock in Germany. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed watching it and learned something new, and we'll see each other in the next one.